So, well, I'm Eric Pellegrin. I'm French, obviously. <laughs> and uh, my production company is called Bridges. So I'm going to try to give you a feedback uh, on my humble experience for the last eight years um, of what I've seen, what I've been able to produce, and how I see the new projects coming to me. How I see how many, just a quick question, how many of you are writers or authors, directors, or producers? Can you raise your hands? Yep. Okay, a lot of you. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, I created the company in 2009. At that time, creating a company in France, in Paris, is like a boulangerie. You have like, I don't know, hundred, hundreds of, of uh, production companies in Paris and France. So we had to be different. And we wanted to produce a lot of things, like documentaries, like uh, films, feature films, series, uh, corporate movies too, you have to leave, um, advertisements, and uh, and the, a lot of people we saw at the beginning told us you have to specialize. To specialize, you need to do to do one thing to let people see you as producers of one type of movies. And we didn't want that because we saw a lot of uh, directors doing, I don't know, documentaries and then fiction and then other things. And we wanted to be generalists. So, um, but you have to start somewhere, right? And uh, at that time, the transmedia was the big buzzword. So we were not stupid, we decided to go there, and not just as opportunists, but um, because transmedia was the way also we were consuming um, the new, uh, we were consuming contents. We didn't have any TV anymore. We were watching films on our mobiles. We had the internet, we had not Chromecast yet, but it would come soon. And uh, yeah, transmedia was the kind of things we, we liked. So uh, we went into those, all those areas with a lot of hope. And, uh, and at that time, we were at a time where you had The Wire from HBO, which was more gesture than a real uh, commercial bet at the time. We had Transmedia with a lot of, uh, of uh, world's clouds. Uh, we had Lens Weiler. Who of you know Lens Weiler? No one? He was, he was a guru at that time, of course, Ben. Um, we had Power to the Pixel in, in London, where we pitched one of, one of our series. A few festivals were happening. And, uh, and the French uh, market was kind of mature because we had for the first time, our, how do you call that in English? It's a, a daily show uh, when every day, every you have a 26 minutes, what do you say? Yeah, exactly, a soap opera. But at we didn't have any soap opera at the beginning, well, at that time. And it was Plus Belle La Vie, maybe you know it. I'm not that much of a client, but it's, it's a good, it's a good uh, program. We had Spiral, the first series ever sold to uh, Eng to England. Mafiosa, which was, a, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's one of our great series. And the first season dates back from like 2004 or something. Uh, we still had that kind of old shows that our parents would not even watch, like Josephine Oshgana is a little lady making miracles. So that kind of things you, you, you wouldn't watch. So this was the, the, sto the, the, the period when we, when we created the company. Uh, so a lot of hope for us. And um, I told you, you have to leave. So we were um, making movies for companies too. Commercials, um, commercials um, corporate movies and so on. But in 2009, it was, it was the crisis in France and in many other countries. So every budget was on hold. So we didn't have any money coming in. But we had the chance to take uh, part to a competition which Orange, the phone company in France, um, uh, throw. And uh, a lot of 
producers took part in this competition and we were very lucky to win it. So we were five companies to be accompanied by Orange Labs, Orange Valley, nobody knows of, it, of them, but it's the research center of Orange. Orange is quite powerful. So for one year we were accompanied by them and we saw a lot of experts talking of transmedia, talk, talking of um, mobile uh, habits, of how people would switch from one media to another, how you could engage audience. So a lot of things uh, Alison talked about. And uh, this was really, it was, it was a passionate moment. Um, but as for the stories, because I also believe in the story very much, um, our story, we expanded the, the, the universe of our story at the beginning uh, of our story, but this universe, um, we, couldn't, we could never pitch it to broadcasters because Orange went straight to their channel and pitched it instead of us. So we were like pretext. It was a way to do big reports for Orange. I'm not accusing, I'm just saying Transmedia was like a great uh, research subject. But where was the, the, the end of it? What was the concrete part of it? I don't know. Because everything went, went quite wrong for us, because nothing of what we had planned happened. Why? Because when you start a company, you want to do... Whoa, I have the same problem as you. You want to do series. Okay. We went to, we managed after a few years to go to the broadcasters because it's not easy to, to have, a, to have a, an appointment with broadcasters. And my, in my opinion, you are working hard with creators, directors, authors to create a story that is engaging. I'm not talking about you working for the story, but that, that will talk to you. So you're working on every line, on every on every uh, theme, every chapter of your story, so when people have the chance to read it, they will love it. Okay, I think that's what you're trying to do too. But when we managed to see one of the French broadcasters, they told us, who are you? I don't know you. I was like, okay, but it's the beginning. Hello, I'm Eric. <laughs> and we have great series that we are, we are writing right now, so write, read them and say, okay, we don't know you. So we're not going to do anything with you. I was like, OK, but maybe you can, I don't know, put us with like big production companies that will reassure you. But the thing is, in France and in many countries, I guess, when someone is deciding to, um, to sign, a, uh, to sign a, a new series, if the series fails, they just, they, they're just fired too. So they don't want to bet on a small production company. So series is not a good, it wasn't a good entry for, entrance for us. Um, when I realized that, I, we went to some bigger studios. So it's not the same as in LA, of course, and we don't have huge studios, but we have uh, big production companies like Gomo, and we developed one series with them. The thing is that to develop a series, you need time. You need time and time is money. You need to live as authors. So, um, so it takes like six months to one year to build your universe, to build your story, and to be able to present it to, to, to a broadcaster. And if he refuses, which was the, the case for, for the series we developed with them, well, you go back to your study and you try to write again a story that people will love once they can, when they have the chance to read it. So series, not a good start. Well, movies. OK, movies, it takes a long time, really long time, five years. And we, we don't, we're not all, uh, everybody's not Almodovar, and we don't have the chance to produce Almodovar every day. So uh, you need a good subject, you could need the good timing, you need the, well, cinema was not for now. You need to have good shoulders. I haven't produced any feature film for now, but I feel like someone, you know, raising your hands and trying to get muscles to, to, to go into the cinema industry because it's going to take time and money. Then you had Transmedia. Trans Transmedia was great. We, we saw a lot of energy at Power to the Pixel, people showing us and telling us stories like you. Like, um, and uh, a lot of those stories were interesting, were, I don't know, Everything has already been told, so you, don't, you, you can't tell something very new. But everybody was doing 
this, like platforms, like en uh, conversation engagement, or I don't know, I don't remember the, the term exactly. A lot of people sh sh uh, show us this for transmedia, but we were like, where's the story? At the end, okay, you're gonna make a Twitter thing and then this and this and this, but what is the story exactly about? I don't remember about the character, about the universe. I understood more or less that it was happening in a factory, but that's all like grab from your pitch. And uh, we're kind of lost, and at one point we're m making fun of it. And I'm sorry because during this day, a lot of people are gonna, are gonna say the contrary of what I'm saying now, but it's just my experience, and it's the beauty of this festival and this day to have different various points of view. But at the point, you had someone telling us that he, would, he wanted to, do, to produce a game. I don't know how much is a game, but it's a lot. A uh, feature film, okay, from two to five million euros. Then a TV series, okay, a lot too. And you added everything. And since 2009, I haven't seen that many real transmedia big things. Maybe I'm not the, I'm not the best, the best uh, how do you say? Um, viewer of these transmedia things, but so at one point transmedia was like, okay, I don't know, I have a story, but I want to tell it in a sim in simple way. I know people love stories, so do they really need all those medias to to get my story, to get this, um, not mine, but the story we designed with authors, with directors? I'm not sure of all this. And when we designed those stories, we went to, like, for example, one of our transmedia projects was about music. Music is one of the main transmedia themes because you can watch it, you can have it in real life, you can hear it, you can watch it on, I don't know, it's on every media you can, you can watch music. And uh, so it was a TV series, we had a lot of contents on the internet, and we have, like, bonuses. Our uh, music was on the various platforms you, where you can listen to them and everything. We went to the people who could fund our program. And the people said, it's a TV series? No, it's Transmedia. Oh, it's over there. At the end of the corridor, you take left and then right, and then you have the bureau. It's 504. Oh, okay, great. You went to the bureau and say, oh, but I don't have any money. <laughs> I was like, Okay, so I'm going back to the TV series, but they say, no, it's transmedia, you can, you can do it here. I'm like, okay, so if I want to sell a transmedia universe that is based on a media that is powerful or where the money lies, you have to go to the money first. So you have a TV series with other things? Okay, you go to the TV series. Is it transmedia? No. <laughs> no. So you sell the TV series, and then what could we do for promotion? Oh yes, I, I thought of this. Oh, this is a good idea. And then, little by little, you build your transmedia scheme. It's not guaranteed that you're gonna do every every part of your transmedia scheme, but that's how I feel. You can make your transmedia story. Whoa, but there was whoa, there was still hope because. Um, so we kept on writing series, TV series, and, uh, and at some point we had the first, we had the first new uh, comers. So you of course know Netflix, Hulu and Amazon. I don't know how many of you know Studio 4? Okay, not a lot of you. Studio 4 is the French uh, France Television web part and they are doing a lot of digital series. IRL is the same thing, but on documentaries. <coughs> Click, none of you. It's Canal Plus uh, documentary part. Arte Creative, so the Arte web part, and they're doing a lot of things, and from a long time. Uh, Studio Plus, Studio Plus, you know of it now. Okay, it's been launched a few, no, you don't? Okay, Studio Plus is the mobile application for short series, like 10 episodes of 10 minutes, that was launched a few months ago. Uh, it's been a year and a half that they are talking about those formats. And uh, it's quite interesting because they have 1 million to make it 10 episodes of 10 minutes. So 1 million is not bad. You can do like an indie feature film. 
Um, and the format of, of those digital series is, uh, uh, is interesting because you can't make, put a lot of character in it. So you need to focus on a few characters and you have a kind of a, a small story that you need to uh, make a series of. So it's, it's a writing that is pretty dynamic. And every 10 minutes you need to have uh, cliffhangers and so on. So quite interesting. Black Pills, you know of? It's gonna be sent. Uh, it's gonna be launched in like around now, before summer, I think. And it's kind of the same thing. It's the answer to Studio Plus for from Free. The yeah, well, he's a, a, a stockholder of this thing. Black Pills. They have various formats, but it's the same, like two to uh, ten to fifteen minutes formats, and they are paying everything. So you don't have a financing plan. They are paying everything. The other part, the counterpart, is they're taking all the rights. So you give them the project and you're producing, but you're executive producer somehow. So if you want to say, if you do, if the first season works well and they want to do a second one, they can say, okay, we'll take it from here. And you're like, okay, because they paid everything. But you can bet on the fact that if, you, if, it, worked, if it worked well, they will call you back. But uh, yeah. That's a new thing, and for us in France, it's quite, it's very new because we're used to the to the author's rights, and there you're giving everything. So it's more a copyright um, point of view uh, for all the writers, directors, and producers, obviously. RTBF also the Belgian uh, the Belgian um, interactive cell, and they are doing cool things too. So. Those guys, at one point, I wasn't thinking about the national broadcasters or the private one, that which we, ha we had trouble to reach. But we had suddenly all those people and they were answering to mails. <laughs> Incredible, they were answering to the phone. So for, for, I don't know, it was modern. It was for us, it was a big opening and um, it was breathtaking somehow. And the other thing is that this is international. Now you can produce programs in English. You can pro produce them in Spanish. They have, they have, I don't know, like 10 to 12 languages in uh, Studio Plus. So, and they are looking for that kind of international things. So, by the way, if you have projects, I'm very interested in co-productions. I love them, and we did one with RTBF, so I'm gonna show you some extracts afterwards. Um, so this was, a, a new landscape for us. Yes, the production landscape broadened. At some point, we weren't only local, we weren't only French. And that's what we wanted to do. Um, because when you're on, your, in, on the internet, you don't, you don't watch only on, at your programs. You're watching everything from every country. And the good Nordic series, we've been watching them. The good uh, US series, of course, the same and uh, from every country. So, we tried. Oh, this is going too far. Uh, so we tried. Yeah, we could do new formats because we, you weren't constrained by the linear way of broadcasting programs from TV. So, we have this thing now. When we are producing a, a series, it can be a five minutes and then you need more length. It's not a problem because you can do 10 minutes one or 15 minutes. The format is not so uh, constraining. Uh, you had a lot of new web magazines, fiction web series, uh, new form yeah, of documentaries that were emerging. So for us it was, ah, now we can feel, we can breathe. You, we, we can express ourselves and our talents and so on in different programs than we used to see before. Uh, Direct to web movies for Netflix is the kind of the same thing as the, the Studio Plus, what they're doing, except it's movies. So new, the new subjects, why? Because when I managed to have this uh, uh, appointment with the broadcasters, I pitched them two projects I've been working on for two years. Two years is a long time. And they cut me in the middle of my first sentence for both projects, saying, it's cleaving. It's like, what? What did I say? 
is cleaving because you can't you can't take like two million people with you on your story and i don't pretend to be able to take two million people with me on my story but that's what broadcasters are looking for so cleaving is the thing that all the tvs would reject and that's what I don't know, you have to start somewhere. So I was talking about music and was saying, cleaving, I don't know, cleaving. At that time, okay, maybe, what, what examples do you have of a, of a music show that is, that is having success right now? I don't know, you have Netflix for some of you? Have you seen the, what's the la la latest show that is about, uh, about uh, DJing and so on? The Get Down. Have you seen The Get Down? Incredible show. Is it cleaving? Maybe, but the success is there. And uh, so, some of you might have uh, seen the. This is what is it? The yeah, it's the long tail of Amazon. So, broadcasters are there, but the rest of the formats we were imagining and the stories we wanted to show are there. And if you're talking of zombies, of course, you won't show it. Uh, not of course, but it's not obvious to show it on TV. But if you have zombies, you have a lot of people who can watch it through the internet. And now all our programs, they are subtitled in English at least. So when putting it on the internet, you can reach a broader audience than before. So yes, I want to be cleaving. And that's what digital formats and stories can, um, the way they can express themselves. Then we had, it allowed newcomers like us, new producers, we could try things. New directors, new authors. In uh, two years ago, when Studio Plus launched, uh, announced that they would launch their platform, I called the authors I was working with and said, uh, guys, there's a new thing coming. Would you like to think of those formats? They were saying, why not? I don't know, maybe, okay, is there money? Not yet, you know, it's all the same. You have to start somewhere, you have to begin to raise money. Okay, we'll think of it. And none of them tried. So for one year, I was calling them saying, do you have anything for me? It's not for me, of course, it's for us. But come on, there's a newcomer, we have to answer to, what their, um, uh, to their announcement. And and they're saying, yeah, 10 minutes of 10 episodes. Yeah, I'm more thinking of like eight episodes of 52 minutes. It's like, okay, this is great, but yeah, you know, this is the top, this is, this is a big mountain. So if you, if you do a series that has the length also of a feature film, but in a TV, in a series format, that's already something. So think of it. And I was like, okay, why not? I'm gonna think of it. <sighs> Two years after, uh, one of the friends of some of our authors uh, launched her series and one of the authors said to me, oh wow, she's the showrunner of this series. I was like, yes, what did I tell you? It's been two years and, I, and I, I'm starting now because I also launched them myself to say, okay, let's write on this or let's try to tell a story about this universe to have do stories so I can show them to Studio Plus, to Black Pills and so on. But yeah, it took time to realize. So even you sometimes can be reluctant to new things. If you're there, I believe you have less reluctancy than other authors to go into those formats. But yeah, you can meet reluctancy. New crew and actors. So uh, before, when you couldn't do a TV series about yourself or a movie, you do short movies. Okay, this is fine, but short movies, very often you have to do them in a pirate way, so you don't pay people. And, uh, and when you're in France, it's quite hard to raise money on those short films. So we do, it, we do them pirately, I shouldn't say that, sorry. But it's the way for actors to, to have a showreel, it's a way for directors, it's a way for everyone to have those showreels. And for us, those digital series, they are a real try, because we can, we can do things with this. And actors, we did a pilot of a web series, uh, and the web the pilot wasn't. We didn't manage to sell it, so I was. We we sent the pilot to to a great festival in France. It's called La Rochelle, 
and it's the, the, the can for French TV series and so on. And our French, our leading actress, won the best, act, the best uh, promising actress award of this festival. But we had just a pilot, not even a broadcast, not even a channel. We didn't have anything, but she won in front of everyone. So now her career has started being launched. And then uh, you have new jobs coming. So UX designers, of course, when you have a when you have a platform, a universe or something, you can uh, you, you have to navigate through. Uh, social managers, YouTube experts, because we see it now uh, the digital uh, digital series we're launching. They are based a lot on YouTube and on YouTube, depending on the hour, depending on the time, on the people you're on the people you're tagging on Facebook too. Uh, on everything, it can be a big success. It can be, it can land on the trending topics during the day of your launch, or not. And this is a is a one um, opportunity um, at one moment. So every of your episodes, if you launch on YouTube, have to be thought in the uh, in this way. And developers, of course. And the last thing, I'm come back to to my role as a producer. Um, those digital series we're launching are uh, real essays for us because I'm not very familiar of the way you launch projects here and you finance them, how, where you raise money. But in France, and I'm going to come back to this afterwards, but you raise money from different parts and the broadcaster is one. So you have to build a financing plan and those digital things allow us to test uh, to raise, to, to make those financial plans, and they are not so heavy as a feature film, so it's quite a, it's quite a good school, kind of. And then, so we tried. I'm going to show you the. So those are uh, this is not a show reel, but uh, just a few extracts of the um, of our productions. Those last. <laughs> Ah oui, t'es super chelou en fait. Et tu vas aller où là toute seule Sophia Bentoumi. On se connaît. N'importe quoi, on se connaît pas. Si jamais c'est ses potes qui viennent de libérer, tu tires dans le tas. Et comment Aïe. tu connais mon frère, toi Expérience inédite en 360 degrés. Au cœur de l'action. Et ici l'agent de la DGSE, c'était vous. À l'occasion du retour du Bureau des Légendes, bientôt sur Canal+. C'est une immersion à terme du Bureau des Légendes. T'as pas en avance, hein Le spectateur va pouvoir être au milieu de, donc, du Bureau des Légendes, entouré des personnages. On a besoin de quelqu'un pour placer un mouchard sur un ordinateur, il faut y aller maintenant. Bonjour, boys and girls, I'm Charlie Epstein. We're back. And it's showtime! Give me a, a, a Starbucks decaffeinated latte with soy milk. You got it? Not bad. Thank you. Et, et maintenant, tu vas avec des tweets. Dix par jour. Tweet, boom, tweet, bam, contre les juges qui t'attaquent. Les parents des juges. Ils sont français, hein? Vas-y! Tweet, boom, tweet, bam, tweet, boom! Okay, next. What you saw is, um... So Jezabel, it's a digital series we did in co-production with France Television and RTBF. 
uh, you saw um, you saw Melancholy Zombie, which is a documentary for Arte Creative uh, and co-production with the Canada with Canada. Uh, you saw Le Bureau des Légendes, which is a, now a famous French series. And we did, uh, this is not exactly transmedia, this is more bonus, but to launch the second season, we imagined a movie, uh, 360 degrees movie, uh, going into the heart of the, of the Bureau des Légendes. Uh, and it's a series that is mainly uh, shot uh, in, in studio, so it's the, it's talking. The subject is a special agent, and uh, not the special agent like James Bond, but more the way he every day has to work. How a special agent working as you in Barcelona would go to work. One day he would take uh, away, then the bus, then the and everything, and things happening to them. It's very popular. I don't pitch it well. I'm not a producer. Uh, but the, this thing, for example, we didn't know how to make uh, 360 or virtual reality when we sold it to Canal Plus. But we said, okay, this is a production, a production. So we know how to handle a production. So we're gonna we're gonna learn how to do this. And we we did partnerships with uh, with uh, virtual reality firms and so on and did it. And uh, Showtime. Is a is a program we launched uh, during the the French elections because the, our French elections are quite funny, and uh, we had a lot of candidates, and this was a councillor of Trump, a fake one obviously, fake one, a fake one giving advices to all those candidates, and of course the advices are are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so great, <laughs> American president. So we tried all those things, and uh, we had so yeah. We went from so we, I told you at the beginning we didn't want to specialize, and we, so we did motion design, documentaries, interactive narratives on the internet, data visualization application, doc series fiction, and so on. And uh, I think that what is in the center of all this is all those are forms, but in the center of all this is the story. And uh, I believe I'm a first. I'm a believer in uh, in the story. At first, even if you do an application, you are telling a story. It might be more UX design than than uh, author work, but you're telling a story with an application with data visualization. It was about ads, and ads was a documentary on uh, Arte. And they did a, a documentary, but on the on all the cultural part that was around ads during the 90s, during the 80s, and uh, and those last years. So we went through data visual visualization of all those things. So you could see how the virus went down, how the cultural um, production went big at the biggest part of the virus of the of the disease and yeah we were telling a story it was like a five minutes experience but a five minutes experience in which you can grab some things fiction of course and everything okay <laughs> okay so yeah this is the auto promotion slide so we won a few prizes <laughs> we're very <laughs> happy about that this is premier jour. You saw some extracts, and uh, this was our first uh, thriller, no police thriller, and uh, we won the best prize in France for it. So we're very happy. For it, one is a Fab Lab documentary. It's a six, uh, seven episodes of eight minutes for Arte Creative. The talks is a short film. Jezabel, you've seen some uh, some extracts. End of the promotion. So. Uh, I've been asking to think about those new formats, technologies, and so on. Those technologies, I won't talk about 3D because I don't think you're into 3D a lot. But virtual reality, okay, this is really happening. In France, we have, you can raise a lot of money with virtual reality. And um, I think we sold one or two 
or three projects to firms, so kind of corporate movies that are really uninteresting. I'm not saying this because this was the brief, but they wanted virtual reality. So we're almost going to do a conference in virtual reality, which can be interesting in a corporate way, a bit less. Uh, but you, you can do a lot of things. But virtual reality is for me, uh, I have a few authors and directors who sent me projects with virtual reality. But the thing is that uh, does the story, does your story really deserve virtual reality? It's not obvious. And it's very rare that I see something I want to dig to uh, to make it happen in a virtual um, in a 360 or virtual reality way. So, when have you ever developed any virtual reality story? Some of you, no one. Are you intending to? Okay. So the technology is not bringing the story. Uh, games, why not? There are some great things you can do and great things you can do with the social media. I'm sure uh, Belen will talk about it. Uh, web documentaries, okay, great too. But I think for my part that it's already belonging kind of to the past. Because we had Le Monde, our newspaper, uh, sponsoring not a lot, but it was like the short films for journalists at one point, and mixing, uh, so development, interactivity, and things like that. But um, I'm not sure every project deserves uh, interactivity, neither, <coughs> because we like to be couch potatoes. We like to be given a story. We like to just watch something, and it could be for hours if the series lasts hours. Um, for a long time, we heard that the only formats you could, uh, you could put on the internet or that were watchable on the internet were short formats. Do you believe in this? I don't. I think you can watch one hour and a half. I think you can watch 10 hours of content on the internet. Internet is not something new. It's not, I don't know, it's not like TV in the 60s. Internet is just a tube. So. I have a Chromecast, whether I can watch it, and we ha I have Canal Plus in France, but Canal Plus, they, they have an experience that is uh, with the different platforms is not working very well. So I tried, I was with my laptop, okay, I send it to the Chromecast. Where is this Chromecast icon? Okay, I don't get it. Okay, <laughs> tablet. Okay, where is the thing? It's not working. Okay, mobile. So this is not a question of, of where on which content you're watching, it's just the content. Is it good or not? And it's not because you're making things for the mobile that you want to have, uh, how do you say this, uh, you have wide uh, shots and close shots. You don't want to have people on a, on, a, on a small screen being just big. You can watch things with huge landscapes. And Studio Plus, uh, what they did is just normal series. It's just they are split into 10 minutes episodes. So. I think you don't really need to uh, to be uh, to be you don't need to be interactive. Some of your stories deserve interactivity. Sometimes you want to engage your audience, and if your program, um, I don't know, is in its essence can appeal to people, can can make people talk, can make people send their recipes or participate, great, do it. But for my part, and from what I've heard of the few broadcasters who were loving Arte at the beginning, they were loving interactivity, so every program had to be interactive. Okay, great, let's make interactivity. But the thing is, do you have on 100% audience, you would have like, what, 10% participating? As you said, at 69th episode, you say, okay, let's help, help me do the 70s, or let's take decision. I'm like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I was I was I was in my couch. I was I was well. So don't ask me to take part in. I love your show, but just don't take. Leave me alone, please. <laughs> Give me good content. So interactivity can be great, but I don't think it's changing things. And I've have I'm having I've been having trouble with uh, with the CNC in France. CNC. So you can raise the the only money from there. CNC is taking money from cinema uh, theater tickets from, well, the money coming from cultural 
uh, audiovisual uh, products and then giving it back to create creators and uh, creators and us and uh, for the last uh, few projects I've been sending them the written was uh, uh, is it a, a web writing uh, how, how can I say that uh, is the writing made in, uh, I'm having trouble <laughs> has the script really been thought to be watched on the internet and I come back to what I said before no I've just, I, we just have a good story. And this story is made for what we're, sending, we're, we're showing you now. And uh, they are looking for, they were looking for interactivity, two medias at least. And now they're changing. So, and Francisco, you will be talking about YouTube afterwards. CNC is now changing. They are, it's not interesting for you, obviously, because you're not French, but for the movement, for the global movement. Now, all, everything that is web-based, but that is documentary or fiction and not with two medias or interactive or necessitating, necessitating a development, will be with classical movies, documentaries and so on. And the rest will belong to something that is kind of a YouTube, uh, YouTube grant. So they are changing their minds. Media will accompany the movement, I'm sure. Um, so, but all this, is it bringing new business model? I'm asking, and it can be. So, how, how is it happening in French? In France, so this is a camembert. <laughs> this is not a joke, this, we really call the French the, the pie chart of camembert in France. We're a bit like, you know. Um, so, you have the broadcaster bringing like 30% of the, of the total amount. You have the CNC bringing the same part of the amount. But bringing is not sure. You have to, you have to apply, you have to put, we are known as French people as file makers. I don't know if it's the same thing here, but we have to do a lot of files. I don't know, for my last, for Jezebel you've seen, um, at my 20th, 16, the 26 files I did for big grants, commissions and so on. 26 for a digital series is a lot. And then you have other desks. We are quite lucky in French because we have uh, regions paying, you have to, I guess, various grants like for writing, for comedians, for crew, uh, tax incentives also. But you notice that broadcaster, I think it was 30%. You notice it's not exactly 30% because in fact, it's more like a pyramid, a cheese pyramid. But <laughs> It's more a pyramid, so you have the broadcaster. Once you have the broadcaster, you can, you can, do the, you can build the rest. Meaning, uh, if he's involved, you can raise a CNC. If you don't have the broadcaster, you can't. You can raise some, uh, some money for writing and other things without the broadcaster, but for the production, you can't. So if you don't have it, you don't have a film. You don't have a production going. So you need it first, then a CNC, and then other desks. And I added these festivals and grants thing, because whatever your project is, whatever media you are intending to, 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 to put it on, um, and we are talking about it before, uh, nobody wants to take a decision on something that is very personal. When you read something, you will like it or you will not like it, but it's very personal. But to say, okay, this will be good, and we're gonna, okay, this is gonna be a great program. You need to trust the production company, so okay, you need experience. But you need to trust your own tastes, and you need to not crash the editorial line of the, of the broadcaster. So that's why there are a lot of people deciding, <laughs> a lot of juries. And uh, if it's not working, it's a problem for them. So you need also festival grants, I would call them stamps. Not important for the 2000 you will raise. It's not for that, even if it's important for the creators, of course. But you could put them as a, as a producer. But you need stamps on your file. You need people to say, oh, this is good. So they will see the stamps and they will grant you their trust. Uh, and I, I will come back to this after. So what I see there, is in the end, it's a classic model of financing. 
classic model, except it's very fragile and every uh, financer is not yet in place. For example, the regions I was talking about, Jezebel was shot in the north of France and in Belgium. And in Belgium, we couldn't raise any money, except for the broadcaster. And uh, the region couldn't take part in, in because they weren't ready at that time. So I made the biggest lobbying I could do, but at one point you can't force them to sign. So it's, it's being now, it's every, everyone is coming to this. Even for a tax incentive, I'm fighting with the TNC right now to get my tax incentive. Otherwise, the projects I've been uh, producing, Jezebel, I'm losing money on it. So, and I didn't know where, where I was going at the beginning. So you, you start, you, had a bit, you have a bit of money, you have the broadcaster, you reach the CNC, they didn't give me enough money. So I reduced the, my scenario, I constrained the directors with the number of shots he could do in one day. And then I reduced the number of things and everything. So you gather all, all this so it can hold. But for now, tax incentives, I was counting on it, they're not giving it to me. So I'm fighting to say, it's in the book, in the rule book, you, you should give it to me, should have the answer today. <laughs> so a lot of fights, and we're looking for those energies of people understanding that TV is not the main model, that you can do things for mobile, for the internet and everything. It's coming, it's taking time, we're at the beginning, but it's a huge chance for all of us. Because tomorrow, you can do your documentary. Of course, you can do it by yourself and send it to YouTube. Who's going to watch it? Your parents, your family, your friends. But that's all. And the big question, and honestly, Alison, I don't know how to answer your question. Because what do you want to do with your documentary, your fiction? Like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I love the story, and we want to do this story, but what do I want of it in the end? I don't know. At least I have one answer. I want it to be watched. I want people to be able, I want it to cross the path of people who might like it. So that's where you need the audience, you need bonuses, you need maybe transmedia uh, disposals and all. So. What are the alternative models? And I'm sure some of you speakers will talk about those alternative models. For my part, um, can you self-distribute? Yeah, maybe. But once you have your, your film, your, uh, what are you going to do? Sell it online? Yourself? Vimeo, VOD? OK, I know some producers who've put their shorts, their series on Vimeo, VOD. Honestly, the result on their financial account is zero for now. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. That just means you need a buzz. You need, you need your project to go, I don't know, to, to a lot of persons liking it and wanting to buy and to pay for it on your site because they won't necessarily find it on Vimeo VOD. There are other models, I'm sure, and I'm eager to, to learn. Produce and then sell. Why not? This is the model of, this is not exactly, but the, the model of short films. You would, they, you would do them partly. Because when I have a, an author or director coming to me and saying, I have this great idea or script I want to produce, and it's a short film, then, okay, why not? But if I want to raise money, we'll have to wait for like two years. Two years to be able to pay people to produce it, and so on. Whereas I produce other things, corporate movies and so on. So those people I said, do you want to take part in the short film? Yeah, okay, it's fine. And what I'm looking for is very short films, like 15 minutes maximum, three days of production, and strong ideas. So it will impact people when they will see it. So you can sell it abroad and everything. But this is, this is a small investment for us. You will put like a... It's still, it's still a budget, you will put like 10,000 euros on the table to produce it, but it's not too much. But if you want to do a series, you want to, you want to do like a 100 minutes ep uh, series, how are you going to pay for that? You need very good energies and you can't take people for three weeks. They need to leave too. You need to pay the rent at the end of the, at the, end of the month. So 
how are you going to do? You, you can split it, but at one point your actors can be not available anymore. So you need to produce and sell. I don't know how to do, really, honestly. Then cross-sell, why not? You have, one, you have had one, uh, your main funds, and then you can try to sell it to other people. It's not just uh, sell it to, to another platform, but we have, for example, digital series. They are worldwide. My series is on YouTube, and YouTube, it can be geo-blocked, you understand? Geo-localized. Um, but I was trying to sell it to the Canada, and I say, yeah, but we have it on YouTube here too. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but we can cut the access. I say, yeah, but why would I pay for it? And uh, I was like, okay, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> I don't know how to do, but I could sell it to Netflix, for example. Try. I don't know if it's good enough for them. I don't know if they would like it and everything. But I'm quite sure the audience of the public of France Television might not be exactly the same of Netflix or the two bubbles representing the public of Netflix and the, the, the one of France Television has a very little uh, similar part. But I, I, haven't tried for, I haven't tried for now, but cross-sell might be a way of doing things. But as you know, people will buy your content very much less than they will pre-buy it for their rights. So you need to sell it before. So for my part, I think that um, when you want to do something without your funders or anything, it's more for self-promotion, your first awards, to get noticed, to make a pilot, and uh, to, uh, yeah, get noticed. And uh, so someone at one point said, okay, this seems good. I'm going to listen to what he has to say, even if I don't know him. Ooh. Um, so promotion, for the promotion, yes, Transmedia is great, and I think that's where it belongs for me. Uh, I know all of you don't, don't have the same point of view, but for my uh, documentary and fiction uh, programs, Transmedia will come afterwards or before for promotion to raise awareness about it. Cross-sell, yes, VR, excellent. Everyone's talking about VR. We're doing it for insurance companies. They want to do conference. Yeah, I told you. Um, and online distribution? Okay, maybe. Maybe that's for promotion. That could be great. You give exclusivity, like free ex exclusivity, to a powerful media for a short time period. The last thing you, show, you saw uh, that was called Showtime was this guy. Uh, we gave the exclusivity to... How's it called in France? Um, to Buzzfeed, no, Minute Buzz in France, which is very known. I don't know if it exists here. I think it's typical French. Yes, yeah, it's okay. Well, they have a powerful audience because they have like 3 million fans on Facebook, so it's really powerful. We gave them the first one so, they can, so we can raise our first public, and it, and it work, worked quite well. But the good news is, the digital has become mainstream. Uh, as I told you, as you know, all of you, uh, you it's not that you don't care, but the content can be on TV, on your mobile, on everything. It's kind of the same, right? You will watch it like this. It's a question of screens. And I don't remember who it was, but uh, I don't have the name in my mind, but a um, big studio executive said, that maybe once the, um, you know, when you produce a movie, you have a, you have the, the, the period, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but for a time it's in the theaters, then it's on VOD, and then it can reach TV, and then, I don't know. So this is the timeline of a movie. Okay. And um, distribution windows, okay. But this executive said that the future might be different. It might be that the movie tomorrow would be, and I'm quite, I do, I do agree with him, that the movie tomorrow would not be, those distribution windows would only be di windows to see the movie. So you would pay, it would be immediately available on mobile, on tablets, on your computer, 
on your TV screen and on theater screens. But you would pay for a movie two dollars for a mobile. You would pay five dollars for a tablet. Seven or eight dollars. It's the movie. It's happening in the theaters. You would pay it in uh, in your at home with your girlfriend, just checking. Oh, this is the new thing. Yes, let's take it. Okay, we're gonna watch it. You can talk talk with your friends about it. And then you would pay like uh, do the um, ten to ten to fifteen dollars to watch it in theaters. And I think it's great. What we see in France, we have two hundred movies per year going into theaters. Two hundred movies is too much. You don't have time. I have uh, an unlimited card to go to the theaters. I just gave it, gave it back because I don't have time for this. And sometimes I want to watch a movie, but it's not the proper timing. It's raining, so I don't want to go outside. It's, not, it's like 8.30, but I'm only dis available at 9. So I want to watch it. I, want, I wanted to watch it tonight, but the, I don't know, the, the metro has, has been delayed, so I'm late. I can't. I want to go home and watch it at my time. So when I decided it, why would I be um, obligated to, to respect your time? So I think it's the future. Yeah. So my um, kind of conclusion, take, oh, I took too much time, sorry. Um, for me, I'm joining you on this point. Um, see, what is the potential of a story? I see a lot of people coming to me and saying, okay, I want to do this series, this eight episodes of 52 minutes of this huge thing. I cannot even produce myself. And I say, okay, but you don't have the potential in your story. It's not working. You don't have enough characters. You don't have enough. Your Bible is not working. It's too small. Your universe is too small. Your it's not working. So, but you can do a short film. <laughs> okay, it can be deceiving, but you can do a, a small series. Or you can do a short film. A TV uh, a digital series, a TV series, a feature film, anything, or a saga. I don't know. I don't know how you predict this. But what is the potential of it? And um, for example, uh, Jezebel was at the beginning a big transmedia universe. This is the thing on music I was talking about. So this is a girl looking for um, who's mute. So she can't talk, and music is for her the best way to express her emotions and to express her voice. And at the beginning, this was uh, 12 episodes of 26 minutes. This was a bet from my production company because we had no 26 minutes episodes in France. So when you want to start, you want to be different, or if you're like anyone, you're just, you won't be listened to. So we were different, we tried it, and we have a big, universe, a big transmedia universe. But it didn't work. So, okay, transmedia away, just a TV series. Okay, we did this and we did the pilot. We won some prizes with the pilot, but it, didn't, it wasn't able to be sold. I couldn't sell it because the only people I could reach, they, weren't, they had changed their editorial line. So then I went to web series and then it exists. So I think that your story can be expressed in various ways. The only question is, is your story strong? And if it's strong, it can be in any formats, kind of. Of course, it's not going to be the same story, but you can work on that somehow. The second point is, can you make a story of your story? Everyone will want to hear a story, not the story you've been writing, but a story about your program. Listen, it's great. We've been to Power to the Pixel with it. They loved it. We got we got the SACD, the Author Association in France, saying that the project was great. Then we went to this festival and they awarded us with this prize. We did the pilot, the pilot one thing. Okay, so this is a story I'm talking about. So when you come to your big financial partner, potential financial partner, you want him to raise his eyebrows saying, oh, this sound, this smells good. Last thing, the timing. What are the strings you can pull? Meaning, you, uh, you want to do a feature film of your story, but feature film is going to cost you, let's say, three million. Are you able to raise one percent of this money? Are you able to raise 30,000 for the writing? Are you able to? Okay. <laughs> but if you know I don't know, the, the same association for authors or something. And you can raise the 
5,000, that will allow you one or two months of writing. Okay, then just go for it. And, but the thing is, it's a web series they're asking for. Okay, let's transform a bit. I, I stick to stories, I stick to the universes I develop, but they're changing. And uh, the format, I'm not, well, I've seen, for example, uh, I've won a little prize, but this is the, my first attempt, so I'm very happy. On a, on a universe, uh, that was great. It was like the two first episodes were 15 minutes episodes. Uh, and it was, um, we, we wanted to have like 10, 10 episodes of 15 minutes. But the thing is, the, this grant we won was, uh, there was a partnership with France Television, which I'm very happy about. But the thing is, they can't finance that length. So I said to the authors, you have two choices, and I'm, and I'm very, feel free, I will work with you as you want. Either you transform your idea into a 10 episodes of six minutes, so one hour, and I feel I can find, because they can finance that, and I can raise all the money uh, put aside this, uh, this first grant. Or, but this needs a lot of changes. But this, you, can, you can take your universe and adapt it. Or we can go to feature films directly. But we'll change this, I don't know, this 115 minutes into one hour and a half. And we, we're going to do this. I think the partnerships, the people you know, the productors, the, the, the production companies you're working with, if they are uh, able to produce it in a way or another, that's what you want to study. And I'm done. I think. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. Wow, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Yeah, well, what? <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> so I just have one quick question for you. Um, would you go again through the same process from 2009 to today? <laughs> because you said this was like a learning experience for you mm. and a teaching experience for the traditional <coughs> agents. So do you take it like, like, a, like that, like a learning experience? Would you do the same things over and over? Uh, how do you take it? Well, the first thing is I don't think you have the choice. Mm -hmm. I created the company at that time and that period was like this. So, but what I found very interesting is that we're in a moving period. So a lot of things are changing. So there are opportunities where if you are, I don't know, in the 90s, everything is blocked. Now we have a lot of things changing. And then the more, the more important is not where you are, but the, the way. You're heading. <laughs>